Yo, 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 what up, Donate Bullcraft, the internet sensation, man, we back, how you doing? Doing as good as can be, I'm still breathing. Yeah, <laughs> hey man, last interview we did, everybody rant and raved, it was a classic, we did over two hours in the last interview, man, people were hitting me up like I've never watched a two hour long interview on YouTube ever, and if you go down and look in the comments, yeah. they, people like, man, I watched it all the way through. Last night, I was down in Bowling Green at my college, and some of my teammates that I haven't seen in years, they was like, man, that hit man, me and my wife, we watched it all the way through. Oh, two hours? Two hours Whoa. all the way through on YouTube, <laughs> man. 1.1 million views in like 30 days, not including your Say Cheese interview that's approaching a million here shortly. Man, oh, the world man. love boom, man. What you think it is about you that everybody's so in entrenched with you? Basically, I keep it real, and uh, I ain't going to sit here and tell them one thing and something else. Yeah. Like I said, I got court document, lie detector tests, everything to prove that what I'm saying is the truth. But I got immunity, so I ain't worried about nobody falling back up on me, government-wise. Can, can you break down immunity? Because recently, um, Keefe D, I don't know if you heard of it, Keefe D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And somehow he thought he had immunity, nah. but he didn't. And now he's been arrested for a Tupac murder. Mm -hmm. So explain what you think happened to him and what makes sure you have immunity. Well, immunity, you got to get that from prosecutor, the judge. Everybody got to sign off mm -hmm. on that immunity, showing that whatever you give them then, you got immunity from. They can't never prosecute you for it. But if you don't give them everything, and I gave them everything. I mean, I went way back. Yeah. On them. But if you don't give them everything and you go out there and you start talking about, yeah, I was uh, down with this and that. Okay, wait a minute. Check his paperwork. He ain't got no, uh, he ain't got no immunity on that. Go get him. Mm -hmm. That's the way uh, they get a second bite at that apple. When you have, like, state and federal, if you— it does okay. federal super immunity, if you get federal immunity, does it supersede any state? Mm, mm, they had to be uh, together. That's why okay. you had to. Cause I got state and federal. That's why when the state picked me up, they was hoping that they could uh, jam me on something else. Mm. And I told them, uh, no, nah, man, I kept everything real. Y'all just mad because I'm on TV talking about it. Yeah. I can. You gave me immunity. If you didn't like the deal, you shouldn't have made the deal with the devil. But you did. So what can I say mm. other than the judge even told even told the prosecutor, the only thing you talk about every time we come in this courtroom is his past. What is the charge you filing now and why is it that it make no sense? Make this make sense to me. She could. She said, well, uh, he said, listen, if you can't make it make sense, let me ask you, do you have a witness? Well, no. They bagged out. No, the witness gave y'all a statement saying that I had nothing to do with what was charging on me. Several, many people came down here and told you that. I took a lie detector test to it. Mm. But you still were holding me because you hoping that I take a cop because she kept coming to me talking about, why don't you take a cop? We'll give you like a year or this. I said, man, I wouldn't do one day. No, I ain't taking no cop. I sit in this county jail. You made my bond so how that... I can't get out on that, mm. but ain't no thing, though. Jail, jail don't bother me. I've been in prison <laughs> damn near in and out all my life. So when they work these deals out with you, are they always trying to find a way to backdoor and get you locked back up again? Definitely, and they, uh, they'll uh set you up because that's what they was doing with me when they brought me back to Michigan. Yeah, I wouldn't have supposed to have been brought back here to Michigan for 30 years after my release. Gotcha. I, they ain't supposed to bring me back, but Michigan did. The Fed kept their word and let me go in the year 2002. But the state fumbled on that whole thing and made me stay in there six more years. Gotcha. And then they told me, well, uh, uh, well uh, you made the deal. It's here in writing. I got it in writing. Rule 35, downward departure. And y'all signed off on it saying that the federal and the state time is going to run concurrent. Yeah. So I'm doing 12 and a half dead, 12 and a half him. I served that. Should have got out in 2002. But the state come up with, oh, well, uh, you got to see the parole board. 
Uh, Parole board shouldn't have nothing to do with this because I was supposed to go into the next stage, which was the witness protection program. Yeah, but I, but I, they didn't put me in that. They knew that that would it should violate that. So when they finally did let me go because I was finna sue them, had I had to file my own court papers after that because the lawyer just I just said, yeah, I go get me. A mandatus yep. and file against them, make them bring me to court. Okay. They're gonna talk about you. I showed my paper. But they violated me, so the feds said that they can't go put me in the next stage because they got people saying that I was gonna blow up a federal building. Mm, okay. I'm that stupid, I'm gonna <laughs> blow up a federal building and tell this man about it. Everybody in here for snitching. Everybody that's work here is gonna tell you anything we say or do. Yeah. So the psych went and told the feds that crap. I'm like, okay, that man mad because I hated his friend that worked it there. Yeah. Cause like I told his friend, if uh if you really want to think you man enough, me, you could go in one of these rooms and close the door. And we get busy. And now I, I wanna know about witness protection. So I recently had a chance to uh interview Steve Fisher. And uh He don't like me. <laughs> Well, you know what, Steve actually spoke highly of you. He don't even you. know me, really. Well, well, we talk. He actually spoke highly of you. Uh, he well, said he a saw lot of people saying that I killed Demetrius. Well, I, no, I ain't never said that. Uh -huh. But there's people. Rumors get around. So you never made the claim that you killed Demetrius Alloy. No. Okay. And if anybody say I did, show me some proof of that. Got you. What well, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna stay right there. Then I will come back to the witness protection part. Demetrius Holloway, he had beef with the best friends. Not when he first came home. Okay. He, that he got beef later because we was working with Maserati Rick. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Demetrius told uh, Rick to, uh, you know, you need to leave them alone. Them fools going to turn on you sooner or later. So uh, people talk and they told us about what, what was said by him. Yeah. So, of course... Uh, Boo didn't like it, so Boo said, hey, anytime you want to get busy, you know, we hey, we can work that out. And of course, you know, like Demetrius was like, ain't nobody scared of y'all? Yeah. I forgot what screen it was, but it was ordered by Rick Store. And Boo looked at me, and I looked at him, and we looked at Demetrius, and I said, oh, man, this fool going to shoot him here. Lucky enough, he didn't. He uh, said, hey, ain't no problem. You don't like us, we don't like you. Yeah. So. What, what did, if you was like to look at uh, Demetrius Holloway influence in the streets as a player, like how much influence did you feel like he had? Did you feel like he was a big player? Yeah, he was a big player. Definitely that. It's just that he was trying to get from underneath that federal indictment he, that he had followed him because you know, like the Fed was trying yeah. to get him. And that's when he... uh faked his own death. <laughs> did, did anybody, did you believe when he, he, Oh, he, no. He, so you didn't fall for it either? None of us. I mean, when it first hit, everybody was like, oh, no, man, he tried to fake his death, man. He don't want us to come in for him, and he don't want the government coming for him. Uh. But yet, when uh, there's, there's no blood, there's no bullet shell, no nothing. There's fine blanks or whatever they was doing <laughs> up there, that big boy, but uh, he ain't dead. So uh, word spread around on the street too. Yeah, man, that we believe that he was paying people to, you know, like say he was dead and this and that, and that they threw his body in the trunk. That's why there wasn't nobody there. Okay, there ain't nobody there. There's going to be some blood. Yeah. With nothing there. So... Who who do you feel like was a bigger player between Demetrius Holloway and Maserati Rick? Well, when he first came out, they both was even. They both was party. They both came up through the, the bread thing. But uh, I would have to say uh, Demetrius, just to keep it on the for real. Yeah. He was. Because Maserati Rick, he was good. He was cool. But he kept shooting people... Uh, Bad vibes about him by by not want to give them the money that he promised. Because mm. I had a little scrap with him about the money he owed him. I said, man, when you give me my money? Oh, man, you, man, you, like, you know I'm good for it. 
I said, "Oh yeah, you're gonna be good for it, man." But uh, <laughs> don't 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 mess with my money. Yeah. See, I love money more than I love myself. That's why I'm out here doing this for the love of money. I'm not doing it because we cool. Yeah. No, I do it for money. <clears throat> now, Steve, nothing personal, but yeah. money. Steve said that um, in our interview. He said Maserati Rick was cheap. Oh yeah, he, he, he was cheap. He, he was tight with his money. You, you would catch hell trying to get it from him. Um, it his influence in the street, so he made a bad rap. What? Because like, what led to his beef with Big Ed? We talked about that well, last see, that interview. Just, that. We heard it was over a girl. Mm -hmm. Rick told us it was over a girl and the money that they both was claiming each one of them old. Gotcha. And me, I don't know, I don't care what it is, but uh, that day you was sh call yourself going to come up there to the club. Man, but the club used to be right around here, back here on land, uh, back here on uh, Learner Street. And uh, they, first time I ever met Ed was when he came up there. Yeah. Of course, he didn't really know who I was because, like I said, I'm always in the background. I don't drink, I don't dance, I don't mingle with people. And I always tell Rick, quit trying to introduce me to people, man. They know who I am. They're going to be looking for me before they look for you. Yeah. And cover me while they're trying to do you. So basically, there's no there's no, there's no, no element of surprise. Yeah. But when he came up there, I was already there by the door when he walked in. I was like, okay. Of course, I know what everybody looked like because... They like to take pictures. Yeah. Girl, their girlfriends or friends or family members pass them around. So we get them. And, oh, okay, this is what he looked like. When he came in that door, I'm like, him and his two boy. I'm like, okay. So uh, he see Mazi Roddy Rick over there, but he still haven't seen Boo and them standing on the against the wall. Boo Ridge and uh, I think it was Luck. Yeah, because Luck had, what was it? What was it, Little Ridge? Look here at the white mink, I, I think, or that it was uh, it's a little red. Cause we always made sure that we wore black minks and that one of them wear white minks so, yeah. so that we walk all around the white and everybody think that, <laughs> think that he's the boss. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, people, if anybody gets shot for it, they're going to shoot you because you got the white mink on and everybody going to think that you is our boss. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, he came in, he seen Rick over there, but, but so did the owner. Yeah. He seen what was going on, too. And uh, the Chaldean or Arab or whatever he was, he, he, he stepped out, but I had slid back farther in the dark. And I already had my shit in my hand. I was like, okay. They shoot in here. He had the first person I'm going to take out. Yeah. That's the money. His two bodyguards, they either going to run or lay down and be quiet. Yeah. But uh, the man said, hey, please, please, not in my club, not in my club. Rick, come on. Hey, y'all know me. I was like, that'd be stupid for anybody to start doing this in front of the club. But uh, Ed bad up to my, I'll catch you later. I can't, Rick, start talking his trash. Here they go. People always want to talk. Yeah. Don't talk. Only thing you had to do is hit the floor, Rick, and I'm taking everybody in front of me out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I know Boo and them got their vests on, and uh, I know what I'm hitting at anyway. Yeah. I'm not going to hit them, but uh, I know Boo was ready to do it right there, right along with me. But they had started bagging up out the door. When he got to the door, he turned. That's when he seen me. He was like, Mm. I done seen that AK I have. Yeah. yeah I'm going through vests. You can have your vest on if you want. Yeah. <laughs> Just going to tear a hole in it. So he went out sideways. Soon as his boy took off first, and then he ran and ran up the little uh, curb and jumped into the uh, 5.0. Me and Rick jumped into the bin. Boo and them jumped into the, uh, you know, like the uh, 5 point, wait. No, they they jumped into the begin with a V. Vogo, uh, Volvo, Vo Volkswagen. Yeah, Volvo. Yeah, Volvo. Because we had a 
<laughs> we had a lot of listeners there. Yeah. We all dick, had them decked out and so forth. They jumped in at them. But me and Rick, we had to run around the corner because he was parked on the side. We got in. By the time we got to Jefferson right there at the light, it was flying down Jefferson. Rick told me, day, I said, yeah. What you think? You going to catch him in this bin? Man, that's a 5.0. We flying down Jefferson. He, he, he trying to catch up with him, but <laughs> he ain't going to catch that 5.0. Yeah. But we still about maybe 10 cars behind. But when when they got to uh, El Gonquin, Jefferson, he disappeared. That's when you say he backed up behind. He backed up yeah. behind one of the, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I told you, yeah, he backed up. Well, he pulled in and came around to the side of the house so you couldn't see no brake light, you couldn't see the car, no nothing. Yeah. And he parked back there, and uh, I found that out later, though, but we flying down, up and down the streets and shit, pulling them, took the other side. Uh, I'm like, hey, man, do you see him? Because at that time, we had the bag phones. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see him, man. What the hell? How the hell we lose him? It's four cars of us, and we lose him. Got you. Now, a little bit back to Demetrius Holloway when he got killed. Was I, that, I was in prison. Was do you think it was your crew that did it? That's what was uh, told to me. Now, because I heard a new by, character by Chuck. Oh, uh, okay. Chuck had told me, they said, yeah, man, uh, Stacy and them had uh, did Rick. I mean, uh, did Demetrius. I was like, I don't even sound right. But, hey, y'all say, that's on y'all. I know y'all like to talk. Yeah. But don't claim something that you didn't do. He said, well, no, man, we, yeah, man, we went into the store because his girl was with him. But she was on the side, and his gun was still on his hoop. And I was like, how y'all get in? He said, man, we cracked the door. We reached up, and we grabbed the bell. And then we just went on in. He was coming out of, uh, of the changing room. Mm. But he still didn't see it. He walked up to the counter. By the time he walked up into the counter, which car said that, uh, which car stood at the door, and Stacy went up there and shot him in the back of the head. Mm. I said, Okay, that's why the hole in the front bigger. He said, what you mean? I said, I, only thing I can speak on, I seen the picture of him. Yeah. I know he got shot in the back of his head. Man. <laughs> that much I do know. And uh, then you like the other information I got from the police talking about, yeah, he still had his gun on his belt. Ooh, he didn't get a chance to even draw it. He had the money on him and all that. But, uh, of course, they didn't go there for the money. They went there for his life. Mm. I said, well. Okay, well, whatever, man. Y'all responsible for it. I don't give a damn one way or another. Because uh, cause a new player came on the stage that I've never heard before. And I, I saw an interview or kind of commentary, uh, kind of like what you're doing now on your channel, and we'll get to it in a second. But uh, Eddie Jackson Jr. was telling a story about Demetrius getting killed, and he was allegedly brought up a character named World. Have you ever heard of World? Well, see, everybody had nicknames out there, but I knew of someone named World. He was, a, he was, I guess he was running things in prison. They said in Jackson, a small guy. And the way that Eddie Jackson said it, it, I mean, World was... In Jackson prison. Yeah, he said he was a gay. And he had a bunch of, you know, gay men, flamboyant men that ran and did his bidding for him. I forgot World, real name. But he, he was a stubby guy? When I seen the picture, I just saw the recent mugshot. He wasn't, he was short, but he didn't look stubby. Little dark skinned guy. And he, he was saying, uh, allegedly, when Demetrius was in prison, him and World start beefing. And they just squashed the beef, and that beef came out to the streets. And World Connection was out there. And according to Eddie Jackson, when, um, when uh, Demetrius faked his death, World didn't believe it. And so, World allegedly had one of his guys go get a job at the, um, what was the store he got killed at? The Hollywood uh, clothing store. And so, he, he inside the store, and I guess he was working, one of World gay guys was working there. And like six months later or whatever, 
Demetrius walked in and he called made the call and that that's when Demetrius got Broadway. So, yeah, Broadway. I said Hollywood. Yeah, Broadway. <laughs> yeah, Broadway clothing. And yeah. that's when Demetrius got killed. So allegedly that's the story Eddie Jackson told on his channel. You have you ever heard of World? Because of course Steve Fishman, he said World was a beast. Like he was small, but he had a lot of power. A lot of people ran behind him from the prison out to the streets. I'd like to know what year this world was supposed because I was in Jackson. And uh, I heard of somebody named World, but there wasn't nothing on you know, like my radar because, like mm-hmm. I said, I had many uh, tables out in Jackson on the back on the yard. Uh, I ran at least 60 stores. I had other people running them for me. I just buy the stuff for them, and they run it out of their locker, or they or they go get the ice from the kitchen, the back kitchen, and uh, we be crushing it up, putting it in the, the ice chest that we be making. But uh, so you never I sold heard. drugs in there. I sold liquor. I sold basically anything that wasn't knelt down, I sold it. Some shit that was knelt down, I sold. Got you. That's why they call me the man. The man, what you need, what you need, I got it. If I ain't got it, I damn sure try to get it. Just tell me what you need. I used to have... My friends bringing up a uh, people loved ones that couldn't make it up here. Yeah. They used to pass the number around and call my friends and let them know when they wanted to go up. So you right there, set up a date and so forth, tell them when they're going to be taking the yeah. next load up there. But uh, Jackson, inside the wall of the Jackson, it got to be inside. Yeah, that's that. When I brought world name up to Steve Fishman and about telling, asking him that same story, his face kind of froze. Like he, he was like, I guess the you know, world was a bad man. He was like, yeah, nah. And so he kind of got off of that. Yeah, because uh, people don't want to speak on a person if they ain't got immunity and they have knowledge of it. They could care their ass to prison too because you have knowledge of this murder. Uh, so you are considered as an accomplice. accomplice to it. Got you. <laughs> got you. That's what I said. I, I made sure everything I told the people, I, I had my lawyer, and prosecutor, the DEA, and the judge, uh, homicide, everybody sat at that table, and we all, my lawyer made sure everything was hooked up correctly. Yeah. I told them, as uh, long, long as they can't come back on me, I can tell y'all everything I ever did in my life down there. Mm. They said, yeah, we want to know everything and who helped you with this and that. So I'm going to tell you the whole story. I, now, I, okay. now, whether it helped you or not, I don't <laughs> know, but I'm telling my everything I did wrong. Yeah. Because I want to make sure y'all don't come back on me later after I finish my time and say, oh, uh, you didn't tell us that. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I brought up I asked somebody well when I put out the interview you know I, I juiced it up I, well not juiced it up I put Detroit number one Notorious Hitman but people start dropping in a comment a name Chester uh, do you know what he was talking about? yeah was he really that that thorough and that cold when it, what was his name was Chester what? he was a hitman he was yeah. a uh, light skinned well not light skinned brown skinned brother and he got caught with a list of people. Mm. But Chester was a, <laughs> he was down for his. You wouldn't really expect him to be like that because he more, okay, like me. People don't, well, people do because they look at me and they'll be like, eh, that man look like he better do something. <laughs> I can't help how I look, people. Yeah. Just, just just how I look. I won't hurt a fly unless he landed on me. <laughs> but other than that, uh, Chester was a uh, man. He he went down for that. He caught him with the guns and everything in his car, and the hit list, and several more and several uh, top people was on his list. Mm. He, uh, but he was not big guy. He wasn't no tiny one. But he was, you know. Yeah. He was down for his action. I never. Heard of him doing no hits that I could say definitely that I knew he did this yeah. or he did that. I wouldn't like that because, like I said, I always kept to myself. I don't care to be hear about what you didn't did or this and that. So why come tell me? You just making me a witness against you. Yeah. 
Are you telling me what you did? I don't want to hear that. Have I ever told you what I did? No. And I ain't no dummy. If you get caught doing something, uh, I'm the first person you're going to throw up under that bus, and you're going to be driving it. Mm. So no. I mean, guys always sit around and want to talk about who they just murked and this and that. I be like, man, let me get the hell out of here, man, because I don't want to be no witness against you. He said, what you mean? I said, you telling everybody what you just did. Nobody know you did it. Keep that to yourself and forget about it. Don't go talking because you tell him, guess what? He going to go tell his friend. His friend going to tell that girl and that girl going to tell more. And then the story get around. D, we talking about, how did I get busted? Running your mouth. Yeah. Keep your mouth shut. And nobody knows. That's why when I did this, I always like to do it by myself. Yeah. I didn't want no four or five guys going with me talking about, uh, yeah, man, we did a drive-by. This was the stupidest way to do a drive-by. You shooting out a window at people that you ain't that good of a shot. There's other people out there. Don't hit innocent people. Get the person yeah. that you want to get. Take it to them. Get out, walk back up to them, and if he recognize you, pull the trigger then. Gotcha. But you ain't got to hit everybody around him. Hit him. When they see him fall, their first reaction is to run. Absolutely. Or hit the ground. I don't know what's going on. And either you keep them down like that and tell them, did anybody see anything? And first thing they do, no, we ain't seen nothing, man. We ain't gone, man. We ain't. Uh, okay, there you go. <laughs> now, we're going to hear about it if you do want to tell the police that you've seen it. Because if you've seen it, then we're going to come back for you. Guess yeah. why? Because the majority of the police was on our payroll. We mm. had prosecutors, judges, lawyers. We had a lot of people on the payroll. That's why I said people were talking about, well, uh, well, Certain people got pictures of me and Gil Hill. Yeah. Certain people got <clears throat> pictures of me and several other lawyers and prosecutors. Yeah. Hell, when, uh, you know, like they came to my house, they thought that sign on the gate was a joke because they had a man holding the gun talking about, you enter the property at your own risk. You commit a crime, you will be prosecuted. <laughs> <laughs> And that, then they won't come and talk about, we ain't never been there. Okay, well, the feds don't think that they got the videos. So uh, you sit there and tell, I don't even know the man. <laughs> I'm sitting there just grinning. And when they showed him the video, we're like, oh, man. So he took a cop. <laughs> Everybody that was trying to uh, say that they didn't know me. Yeah. Yeah, well, you've been to my house. You know me and you on film. <laughs> No sign wasn't no joke. You came to my house anywhere that I was, you was being filmed. I trusted no one. That's why I had booby trapped my house that one day when they all came over there. I said, man, I know these fools finna kill me. But they go on with me. They just don't know it mm. because they got to open that door to get out. <laughs> and if you open that door or window, this house going to go down. Anybody in it, you go down with me. Which car seen it? He was like, Is that a grenade? Yeah. There's many in this house. But it said it with the door on a switch. But yeah. If you don't know how to cut that switch off before you open that door or window or whatever, you kiss your butt goodbye. <laughs> So they all start going, man, I'm going back outside, man. This boom house might go off. No, it won't go off unless I'm dead. If I'm dead, this house goes off. Gotcha. And everybody in it goes with me. <laughs> because like I keep telling you, I'm not going by myself. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> go ahead and do me. Because why would you bring these guys over here, boo? Nobody knew where I lived but you. You bring these guys over here and these are little hit boy. Yeah. Now, quick question. When it comes to the hit jobs, which is more lucrative? Selling dope, robbing dope boys, or hitting licks? I mean, I mean, make doing hits. Which is more lucrative? Selling the drugs is more lucrative. That's why when we were uh, doing the hits, we wasn't bringing in that much money, so we had to start taking people's uh, shit. 
Mm. So we go around and stick up the other drug house because what they going to do? Yeah. Not a damn thing. Plus, we probably going to kill you anyway. So we take from you. And Man, you weak. You don't like it? Hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to say, hey, now we ain't got to worry about him going telling nobody or him trying to get back. Yeah. We run up in their place, take all this shit because we watch them for a while to see how much drugs, how much money they got in there, who all going in, what time they going in. Because uh, they even robbed my nephew once. It was Boo and Ridge. Little Ridge. Not Big Ridge that's in prison. Yeah. But yeah, they robbed my... And what they did was they took this whole safe. And the only reason I knew about it because they came to my house with the safe. Oh, man. And I said... That was like Bruiser's safe. <laughs> Booster, I'll get it to my... <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> the, dummy did, the, the dummy took us to his house. Uh, uh, so his house <clears> was <throat> our place of business. Yeah. Man, we ain't giving nothing back. That nigga always running from us, shooting at us, and this and that. I said, because y'all keep pulling up on him. And y'all know he's scary. Of y'all. You keep riding up on me. He know that what y'all like to do. You like to ride up with people and shoot them. <laughs> so when you rode up on him that day, he fired and took off. First thing y'all do is call me. Hey, boom, man. What's wrong with your nephew, man? He just shot at us. I said, what did y'all do? Yeah. Nothing, man. We were just pulling up on him. I said, that's why. You got to let him know that y'all in the area and you're coming. Yeah. If y'all just riding down on him, he going to think one thing. You niggas come to do him because he knows that y'all is knocking off people that's higher than y'all. Yeah. And that's what happened. He knocked, uh, well, they were knocking some of their bosses off, and, I mean, they was killing anybody that they could just take over their operation. Now, it, when it, well, let me backtrack a little bit. In the mind of a hitman, do you, to be a hitman, do you have to be an evil person? What is the, to be successful, what type of mind state do you need to be in to be a hitman? Well, I don't know about <clears throat> other people, but some people are just doing it because of the money. They, mm. Hey, man, how much you going to give me to kill that guy? Uh, okay, okay, man, I go kill him. I go. You niggas kill the motherfucker for, for a goddamn eight ball, won't y'all? <laughs> <laughs> But do you think it's that easy for any person to kill for money? Or do, well, it, do it take a certain type of mentality to be able to do it? It takes a certain mentality to kill and not let it bother you. Mm -hmm. If you kill it, and then at nighttime you thinking about what you did, you ain't meant for that life. Because you're going to always be worried, shaking, and then always nervous because somebody know you did it. Yeah. Not to mention, you pulled the trick on this individual, now you thinking about... Damn, man, I ain't never seen so much blood shoot out or, or I never seen a person's head come off like that. It all depends on how you're doing it, too. If, you, if you're using a knife, then you better be used to blood. Yeah. Using the gun, well, you, can, you at a distance. So doing your... That's why there's a lot of dummies out here doing them, but they are having flashbacks. Me... I did mind it was a business. It wasn't nothing personal. And I never had flashbacks, mm. so I never thought about it again. I did them, and that was the end. I made my money, and they told me, hey, man, don't you ever feel regret or, or you like, uh, ashamed that you did or regard? I said, no. Nah. It was business. It wasn't mm. nothing personal. They entered this lifestyle, so you know what the situation is. If you get into this lifestyle, there's only three ways you're going. There's no retirement. Yeah. You either go into prison, you go on, or you're getting killed, or you're going to wind up crippled. Some people get off and try to say, well, I'm quitting. Okay, but you think that your boy going to let you go? Mm. And you taking the money with you? No, your boy going to kill you. Because <laughs> he <laughs> want that, and he want your power now. Yeah. Your boy's going to always want your power. I don't give the, if you and this guy grew up together, in his head, he watching you. He learning from you because one day he going to take you out and take over himself. Mm. And say, that such and such person killed him, man. 
But don't worry, though, I'm going to run it now. That's the whole scheme. Somebody is always waiting in the pack. Somebody's always waiting in the background yeah. to step into your shoe. The, well, I'm going to just get me some money and go. I have seen some guys do that, but you didn't want to do that. They always wind up in bad shape later. Why? Because they let the uh, female scam them out their money. Mm. Oh, baby, I need a new shoe. I need a new bag. I need, you know, you still be spending your money, but you ain't making no more money because you gave up the game. And now you broke again. Now you got to try to get back in. I, I seen um, a study say, or I've seen someone say, um, in order to kill somebody, you have to dehumanize them. Meaning like, you look at them like, you know how most people are like, I kill that nigga. Because a nigga is not a person. You make him a nigga, you dehumanize him, and it now become easier to kill him. Um, in Viet, you know, World War II, we kill those Japs. You dehumanize them, now you no longer feel like you're killing a son or a daughter. I mean, a son or a daughter or a, a father or a friend. In your head to do business, do you have to dehumanize and just say, hey, this is just a job? They're like completely disregard the human factor of it. See, I look into it a little deeper than that, Bainey, because you kill him for the rich folks to get more richer. Yeah. They want to keep you in the army to protect their money so can't nobody get to them. Because mm. if there was no war and people come over and just took, the rich going to talk about that they're going to take from us. So we got to get some people to fight. Call them the United States Army. They fighting for this country. Mm. Uh, this country ain't never did nothing for me. So you say everyone... But make, me a, but make my people slaves and brown us over. But they, but they go to war? For what? Why you want me to fight the job? They ain't never did nothing mm. to me. So I ain't going to go fight for you when you doing it. But I join only because... I'm going to rob you. Mm. <laughs> in government, which I did. I, I made money while I was in there. That, <laughs> but I ain't going to speak on that situation. But, but yeah. That was an inter interesting point that you just made there because do you look at every 18, 19 year old that signed up in the military? These are higher hit men. They but, training them for them. Train them for, so. Yes, they training them for the army. Get you in there. They're going to train you to not look at this as a person. Mm. That's what I'm this is just a, excuse me, but I'm not racist or prejudiced, but they're going to, look at his eyes. His eyes are scrawny. You shoot anybody or anybody that look like that. Mm. They ain't did nothing to me. No, no, but you fighting for the country, the USA. They're going to beat that into you. They're going to browbeat you with all types of other things, and then they're even going to offer you money. They go to money again. Uh, you're going to get an extra bonus in your pay. And mm. we pay you all this. We're going to help you with your schooling. We're going to train you to do this and that. Yeah, they train people. Uh, but then when it comes time for them to get the job on the situation that they trained them for, they don't get it. So then they release them back to society. Yeah. Just like they do in our, our prison. They hold you in there until your time up. Then they release you back. But they're not keeping their word about helping you do this, help you do that. But they tell you that. Mm. But they have you just look at them people as they not worthy of, of living because they going to come over here and kill you, our kids, our people, tear down this country. Do you want to live under a man that that runs everything by hand? Mm. I said, well, we really do. But y'all call them big business. Yeah. I mean, big business is making money. The lower class, which is what well, they well, the medium. That's why these people on strike. Yeah. Rich getting richer. The medium class is running things for them. And then people like, uh, y'all work for the company, which I'm a foreman. But no, no, no. You got us working. We are the poor. And we just barely get enough money yeah. to survive. And then you get raises and bonuses and so forth. We don't get nothing. You yeah. give us a little penny here and there just to keep us to come back. You don't want us to make no money because then most likely some of us wouldn't come back. We'll go start our own business somewhere. Yeah. Like they had the Black Wall Street. Those people made that money and they built that own little city. And but they of, course, of course, the whites went in there 
and tore that damn place down because they don't want them seeing. And who gave them up to do this? To do that, the yeah. rich white folks. Oh man, they taking your job. They uh, starting banks. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Right. <coughs> if I drop dead, cremate me. <laughs> Don't let the government get my body. Now, a quick question. They're, they're, uh, they'll put me in the classroom that they bleach <laughs> my body, but it's all money. Power want to keep the power. The only way they're going to keep the power is making the people that's down underneath them keep working for them. And then you like whisper in their ear. You need to keep those people working. Yeah. If they don't want to work, get rid of them and get somebody else in. But see, though are, but see, they are the lower class. And you don't want to pay them enough. You want to pay them just enough to come back to work and get that next check for the next following week, which they gonna have to spend. Yeah. And when they spend it, they rep back working again. So we keep them working. We're gonna give you a little extra because you're gonna help us keep them working so we can uh build this company up. This company is for us. Yeah, they do mean us, meaning them, not you and not the lower class. But y'all keep working, and we're going to just give you pennies. If you ask for a raise, oh, no, 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 no. Mm-mm, mm-mm. We give you a raise or raise raise a salary up. We ain't going to get that much money. Yeah. So we got to keep you down. And we got uh, the middle class making sure you stay down because they going to see that you're trying to get their position. Yeah. Of course, the middle class know they ain't going to never get in. The top class, because they the money maker. They the one putting all this together, building these companies, corporations, and so forth, so they can make money and stay powerful. They going to get into office, and then they going to buy the the less slated. I ain't, I ain't talking right. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't getting the words out. I, I, right I want to ask you this question before I forget real quick. When, when it comes to killing, outside of just hits, are there any other means that's justified to kill anybody other than self-protection? Only that they are into that lifestyle. People are into that lifestyle. What about capital punishment? They're free to be a uh, capital punishment. That's just a way for the government to get rid of you if you ain't going to bend to their will and you ain't going to do what they want you to do. So are they you gonna, for? Uh, are they going to put you in, in for the death penalty? Are you for or against death penalty? <clears throat> death penalty. Well, I ain't going to say I'm for it. I ain't going to say I'm against. Because, like, once again, it's back to if you ain't going to do their will or or you like their killing for them, mm. no, nah, they're going to have you uh, executed. But me, no, nah, I'm not for it because a lot of people they kill it didn't even do the crimes. Because you, you confessed to, well, how many murders? Well, it was 30 what? 30. 30 murders. Yes. Well, what is your concept of God? Do you do you think God is this? Do you have a religion? Do you have a faith? Anything? I, I don't believe in no faith. I have studied all the different faiths. The last faith I studied was Islam, Muslim. Okay. Uh, but like I said, I'm the type of person to sit back and watch and look and learn from what they're doing and what they're saying. Now, you got the fools out there blowing themselves up. Yeah. They are she high. They yeah. blow themselves up because they had that put into their head from the Quran. The Quran do not state that. But they but the people that is preaching that preach it to them. Yeah. And people believe it. Become radicalized. Oh yeah, we're gonna get all the virgins. Yeah, you the you the virgin, dummy. <laughs> you ain't gonna get nothing if you go blow yourself up. Person that had you doing that, get in the bomb go. go. Go ahead, go ahead. Show us how this done. Mm. There's no comeback. Yeah, no, for sure. But they're going to have you to wear a, a vest or carry bombs and go blow up a building with you in it or go fly a plane into a building. Hey, uh, the person that taught you any of that, yeah. what happened to them? <clears throat> you need to think before you act upon something. You're killing people that ain't got nothing to do with it because they told you, well, this country, we need to get rid of this country. Why? Always ask the question, why, behind anything yeah. you do. But death penalty, they should abolish that because they might get a 
couple people that did do what they did that should be put to death. Like, but, if you're wrong. Uh, but, uh, but the majority of people, they didn't do yeah. it. And they just want to kill the person because they know they, they can't get that person to do what they want. So, Other than that, go to prison, serve your time or whatever, or stay in there until you die. Yeah. But see, if they can't make no money off you, they go, because trust me, they, they are thinking way ahead. Way before you even get found yeah. guilty or whatever. But so they like, killed him. So, so real quick, so because back back to God, because I want to keep you there real quick. Cause, so no organized religion, you don't, were you at any point in time a Christian? Are you, did you actually practice Islam or you just studied it? I studied it. Got you. But even though I was uh, a practicing imam in prison. Oh, okay. Where, where you know, like I led to prayers and everything. Because yeah. you must lead, well, I ain't gonna say you must, but that what was taught that we should lead it in Arabic, Arabic. the mother tongue. Yeah. Some people do say it in English, but I always spoke it in Arabic, <laughs> and I taught the other ones how to uh, understand it, speak it, and practice it, as, and to do their prayers in Arabic. Yeah. But uh, do you still pray now? No. Do you ever pray? No, because I'm praying just by sitting here. I'm mm. studying. He's always on my mind. If so you are a believing the God or hell? I believe it's both, mm -hmm. but I know I ain't going to heaven, and mm -hmm. hell don't want me. They got a PPO order out on me. <laughs> but so, because I'm an atheist, um, I tell people all the time, I'm an agnostic atheist. So when I tell people agnostic, just mean I don't know. So if you ask me, is there a God? I don't know. Same man. I don't know, but I know there's something. That created this. Mm -hmm. Now they call themselves God or some other name because everybody got a name for the word that they say God. Mm -hmm. Now who came up with the word God? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I mean, did the people that was supposed to have made us say, "Okay, call me God"? Mm -hmm. Made no sense. Who came with that? And why is it that you got the Old Testament, the New Testament? The I mean, you got all these different uh books you supposed to believe in. So do you believe, because you said you believe in the heaven or hell. Well, I believe that's if you if you die, you go either go, <coughs> go somewhere where where you was a good person yeah. on this plane. Mm. If you was an asshole like me, you're going downstairs. Mm. But see, I always sometimes make a joke about it and say, well, if I'm going down there, I'm taking over. <laughs> Because I, I mean, I sent a lot of people there, and I always tell guys before I, before I send them to their maker, uh, remember me. The next time you see me, if you hear me go, <laughs> I'm the devil. Mm. So remember that. I'm not crazy or nothing, but everybody that do things wrong, you to make yourself the devil. Mm. Everybody is their own devil. Everybody is their own. So, so what that mean? in God, you is God. Mm. Because you believe in that, so you're going to go to a better place. Now, who take you there? Don't know. Me, I always think one thing. When you die, you get recycled into the next baby born at that time. Mm. So what do you think you were before to be recycled into who you are today? I've been like this since I was eight years old, nine, eight years old. So I knew where I was going when I when mm. I came, when you're like, I, when you're like, I came aware of my surrounding, the people. Yeah. I mean... I don't even know why I started doing what I did, what I do. People used to dog me, try to beat me up, try to do things to harm me. Do you think and that's I a mental illness? Watch. Okay. I'll oh, do you rid of this because yeah. he's going to keep coming back. And that's when I stopped seeing people as people that are going to do righteous. No, they're going to do some wrong because that's just the way that they cut themselves. Mm. Like men, they thinking that they... Uh, is above everything. Yeah. And the female just think that they runs everything, which they should because you have to understand, they get life and bring new people into this world. Men's ain't doing it. Men's is giving a small percentage when we into them. and But the woman got to carry that child for mm. nine months until it's born. Then most likely the majority of them got to raise them until they get a certain age. Yeah. There's some females out there that Ain't worth crap that 
that let the kids run the street and do what they want to do. Yeah. You have to put your hands down on them. Don't kill them. Do but you, you got to spank their butt. So with that being said, where where do you, if you don't have like, because a lot of people draw, quote unquote, their morality from religion, holy texts, things of that nature. If you don't have a quote unquote God, as people say, where do you get your morality from? Because some people may say you being a hitman is immoral, but the the double standard to that, nobody say going to the army is immoral because they go to kill for money too. Yes. Well, I'm, I got my morale because you know what's good and you know what's wrong. Mm. And you know what to do right or you could do wrong. All that is inside of you. Mm. You know that it's wrong for you to kill your mama. But then you got some fools out here that do. Yeah. They know they wrong. Do you think it's a sickness? Because in order to kill your mama or just to kill people in general over and over again, is that a mental illness? That's a mental illness, meaning that at that point in time when the person do it, they don't even know what the hell they doing. Mm. They done flipped out. They done lost their mind. That's what they call losing your ever blanking mind. Yeah. Yes. I've seen guys come through prison that killed their mother or killed their girlfriend. One killed his girlfriend's mother. And when mm. he got in, I asked him, I said, uh, Willie, why did you uh, kill your girlfriend's mama? Because she was there. But the girlfriend's still alive, right? Yeah. So she's still out there laying up with some other guy. And here you is in here for the rest of your life, but you took her mother's life. She had nothing to do with it. That was between you and that woman. And you never should put your hands on a woman anyway. Mm. If you felt that you got to do that, you're supposed to walk away yeah. and leave that situation alone. Never harm a woman. Why? Because they they help keeping this world turning, mm. moving. You ain't doing it. Sometimes men won't sit around to take care of their own responsibility, their own kids. They run around having kids with any woman that open their legs to them. Facts. And these women are accepting these dumb, mm, dumb, uh, uh, dumb knuckleheads. I mean, why would you live with this man? You know he ain't no good because he got a kid with that woman. What you think, he going to treat you better? No, he just trying to hit as many as he can, get off and drop kids everywhere. Say, well, I got kids here, I got kids there. But you don't take care of your kids. Like get, my father. My father didn't take care of me, mm. but yet I was created. Yeah. Do yeah, you think, think because that I'm supposed to pay him attention? Yeah. Hey, come here. You know you're my son. So. I guess in name only, but uh, no. no. My mama told me that. Oh, that is your dad. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't believe in uh, paying that individual no mind. Yeah. He smacked me in the back of my head. So loyalty, or do you have loyalty to anyone? Can money buy the services to become disloyal and make you not be loyal to someone no more if, with the right amount of money? Like me and you been having like, a working relationship. Uh, like my uh, people that I love, that may not love me, but I love them. Yeah. I'm willing to lay down my life for them. Yeah, Them I will protect. I would never... Let somebody tell me, what if I give you 10 million? Will you kill your brother or your sister? Show me the 10 million. You show me 10 million, I'm blow the top of his head off. <laughs> so let's put it like this. Let's say back in your I never kill my family members, people I love, truly love. Yeah. Because he love is a strong word. Yeah. So let's say back in your heyday when you was in the height, you know, doing your, your thing in the streets, hitting, doing hits. And let's just say, you was, you two was around and we I'm your manager and I'm helping you get everything going like I've been helping yeah. you recently. Yes. But somebody come in the bag like, hey, I need Big D gone. You get me out the way for, <laughs> for the money. No, Why? Yeah. Because you showed me honesty and faith. Mm. You didn't ever put me down. You always told me the truth as far yeah. as far as to my knowledge. You have always been straight with me. So no, they come to me talking about take Big D out. Well, uh, you may not hear about that they tried to pay me to take you out because I'm going to take them out. Mm. Because they show right now that they'll pay somebody to take me out. Yeah. If they're going to try to pay me to take you out and they know you're my boy, oh, no. Uh-uh. But I play along with him for a little short time until he showed me where the money at or this and that, and they don't take him out. <laughs> 
Now, y'all might hit find 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 some body parts yeah. here and there because I'm gonna chop them up just so that he can make the news. Oh, uh, they finally found out who all the body part it shit belonged to. Yeah. yeah. And then by the time you hear like, I, I knew that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know him? They cut him up into many pieces. Yeah. That he must have did some foul crap to somebody. I asked you that question because a lot of people in our in our last interview when you talked about Maserati Rick and uh, Maserati Rick getting killed in the hospital. Yeah. A lot of people felt like you sold your loyalty and allowed Rick to get killed because you said you were with the money. I'm down for I'm down with the money. But understand. If you went to this lifestyle of, crim- of criminality, yeah. then criminality, each person would cross their own self out. Mm. But I would never, like I said, I would never cross my family, people that I truly love and care about. Yeah. Them? I didn't care about them. I cared about that money. Yeah, That's why I never go where they went and hung out at Pat Lounger, I, Blue Lagoon, and all these places. I never hung out. Only way I go there, you pay me to come. And then I'll be in in the corner in the dark, keep an eye on you. Mm. But I ain't going there just to be partying. That's that's a fool way. That's how you get caught up yourself. If people know you're going there, okay, uh, we go there and spot them there and kill them. Mm. My way, no. For the right price, I will walk away. But that's only if you into this game. So for Rick, sooner or later, somebody gonna take you out because that's just the you nature. making money, and somebody gonna get jealous of it. Yeah, but if me and you cool, and we working like we are, no, there is there there is principle. You not into the lifestyle that I'm into. Gotcha. I'm using that lifestyle. We both know this. Well, there's no loyalty between us. Mm. It's only understanding that we ain't supposed to do this. But of course, we know. For the right price, I'm gonna do you. Gotcha. Or I'm gonna step away if the, that if the people pay me, hey man, you go twenty five. Step away from this. Think about it. Hmm. I caught hell getting my money from them. Give me the twenty. I'm gone. Now, question: Could somebody buy themselves out of a hit? That have been tried on us before. Well, anyway, this one guy, stubby little guy. He knew we was coming. The word was all over the street. We snatched him up, put him in the van. And, uh, of course, I'm sorry talking to him. So, how do you want it? Bullet in the head, or you want me to chop your head off with my axe? Man, come on, man. Don't do this to me. Man, I'll pay you not to do it. I said. And then he seen the way I was looking, thinking about it. He said, man, I'll give you double it. Double? My boy looked at me too. He said, man, it's on you. I said, hey, check this out. Can you get us the money? Because we ain't going to let you go to, to, to go get it. I'd rather just do you and take the money that I'm going to be paid for. But if you could get that money to us without no motherfucking backlash, I won't. He said, man, I'm going to call my sister. He did. He called his sister. Told his sister where to take it to where we told him to have a take. And we sat back and we watched her bring the bag, sit it there, and then she left. A few seconds later, his phone rang. Yeah, okay. Hold on. I give it to him. And he said, thanks, sis. I love you. I love you. You saved my life. And he really did save your life because I promise you that I won't kill you. And that's my word. Now, could somebody... So I go get the uh-huh. bag. After I get the bag, I come back. He said, see, there's all the other... Man, really is? Okay, I won't kill you. My boy said, but I didn't say I wasn't going to kill you. Boom! <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I I kept my Man. word, though. I didn't do you. He did you. Man. There's always going to be somebody out there that's going to take that contract with that money. Yeah. Now, you made that deal with me, and I kept it. Now, I ain't going to stop nobody else from killing you. I just said, I won't kill you. And that's my word. As soon as I turned the chair around, boom. Oh, shit, I forgot. You didn't pay him because the dig, of course, the guy did. Now, but me and my boy (laughs) making a joke of it. Now, like, oh, I forgot. I kept my word, but 
you forgot to tell him <laughs> that you're going to pay him, too. <laughs> yeah. Because this money just for me. <laughs> and my boy told me, you going to give me a little bit? I said, yeah, because I'm sitting in front of you. I want you to shoot me in the back of the head. <laughs> he said, man, I wouldn't shoot you for nothing in the world. You know, I laid out my life for you. And that's the way me and him grew up as kids yeah. together. And we would die for one another. Now, the best friends was the Brown brothers, right? That yes. It was, was, how many, four of them? Yeah, four that was involved. Goes, so, he, Boo. He rock, Boo and this Rocky Ridge. Rocky Ridge. Two of them got killed, and then there was two left. Got you. Now, Ro Rocky Ridge is the one that's locked up now. Yeah. Got you. Do you have a relationship with Rocky Ridge? I don't believe we have a relation no more, but before Boo did what he did, me and Ridge was cool. I mean, I was in prison, he was in prison, also if he was on the other side of the prison, which made people look, well, made him look bad because he was on blue hole card. what that mean? That mean for your protection. You didn't want to go to the general, general population. Pop. Yeah. Mm. And when I walked across past Blue Hole Car, heard somebody hollering. Boom. Back in. I'm like, somebody from the Blue Hole Car. Did we send anybody in there? They said, no. I'm looking in the phone. He stepped out from the doorway. Bridge. Yeah, man. What's up, baby? I said, what the hell you doing in there, man? Man, no more people out there try to kill me. Or, or they want to kill me if I go to population. Mm. Man, that's just like the world, baby. Wherever you go, somebody going. And if they really want you, they can get you in there. Yeah. I didn't got people in there before. What? He said, man, uh, what you going to do, man? Is you going to help me if I come off? I said, man, you come off, ain't nobody going to touch you. Mm. But you had to turn your coat inside out. That's how people that work with us or that's down with us, we turn our coats inside out. Got you. He said that he got to think about it. I said, man, I can't do anything for you while you're in there. Because, see, I ain't going to be here that long. I'm going to get transferred up north. Yeah. Because Jackson don't like me because of what happened back in the 70s and the 80s. So... Yeah, man, but that's what me and my sister talked about the other day, what happened in Jackson, how they tried to kill me, threw me down the iron stair and put me and put me in a laundry hamper and transferred me everywhere, but nobody would nobody would let me in because they said, oh, we ain't taking that man. You got him in the laundry hamper. So they finally took me to Riverside Hospital. Got you. But, yeah, uh, what? he, that, that, you know, he was locked up in there, and that's a no-no. On the streets with the best friends, because I heard some people like, man, the Brown brothers, you can look at them. They just eerie. They tough guys. They, they. some people even went as far as to say they, they kind of evil. How would you look at the Brown brothers? Were they really terrorizing the they streets got, like that? Uh, screw loose. Hmm. Even Rich, all of them had to screw loose because they do stupid things. They don't care about who they hurt or what they, how they do it. Now, Red, I got along with Red because he liked it to cook, eat, and just sit back sometimes. But once he started popping those acid pills and getting a little drink in them, he ready to go ride the street and find somebody to kill. Now, what about Boo? Boo, I never hung around Boo. Only thing Boo was, the only thing I got from Boo was Boo was always thinking about where can he set up his next spot. Mm. That's what I liked about Boo. Well, I liked about that part about him. But as far as him coming over and want to sit up in my house and just eat, yeah, he was too busy trying to find out who can he send to uh, to Atlanta or send him to yeah. every place he could think about to get more money. Who got killed in Atlanta, Boo? Uh, one of them boo. Now, who was the one, the first one to get killed here? They, they, uh, they duct taped it, his butt and his Gucci sheets. Man. And... Police never, well, they said they can solve it, but I don't think they really want to lock the, lock the person up that pulled the trigger on. Gotcha. Because Chuck told him who did it. He was there when they did boo. Yeah. Chuck and uh, what, Little Red. Because after they did boo, they duct taped this butt up and everybody took off. Then everybody was trying to stay away from him to 
this one person because he was flipping on everybody as well. Yeah. Like I said, when the game get like that, when you turn on your own friends, your own men, your own men's gonna try to stay away from you now. So they all went off to you uh two different states. Gotcha. But they wanted to throw him a party. And he found out about it. He said, Oh, y'all think y'all gonna surprise me and kill? Don't make me come hunt y'all. <laughs> and they were scared of that boy. Now, while you were locked up, or were you in witness when it come to um Sammy the Butcher? Who? So what, what number? Sammy, Sammy, Sammy the Bull. Bull. I said Sammy the Butcher. Sammy the Bull. <laughs> yeah, Sammy the Bull. Were you locked up with him or y'all was in uh, witness protection together? We was in witness protection. Team. Now explain witness protection. He was on the top tier and I was on the bottom tier underneath closer to the shower. So witness protection is still jail. Yeah. It's just. It just is more, it's more kicked back and relaxed at that time when we went in there. Mm. But now they done took everything. You don't get all this stuff that we got when we first went in there. I mean, we got everything. But then, let me see, Janet, uh, see Janet, Janet Marino, okay. they had them to script all the witnesses out of the, their own personal clothes, jewelry, meat, coal, diamond, I mean, everything that, or that you came by through commissary, we had to pack up and send it home or send it somewhere, but you couldn't have it in there. So tell me, what was your, your, your perception of Samuel Bull? I guess I would have to say that he thought that his name meant something. Sammy the Bull. Your name don't mean shit to me. Mm. You just another human being waiting to get some dirt down on you. But you're going to tell me I shouldn't hang out with Philly. No, I know Philly. But then me, we done did some things, you know. I showed him some things and he showed me who was who. That's how I knew who was who out there. Yeah. In New York and Jersey and so forth. Now, I ain't got no beef with you, but you ain't going to tell me who to hang with. When you want to do something like that, you got to you gotta show me you got the balls. Come on mm -hmm. down here and uh, handle me because I'm from prison. I'm from the streets. I'm from everywhere. I don't bow down for no one. The only reason I'm in this witness protection program is because they didn't want me back in the state. Because mm -hmm. they talking about you headed too good. I got pictures of me with three-piece suits on in the state prison. For a coach, everything. I mean, I had anything I wanted. And I had a three fifty seven in there. Yeah. Like, How you get a gun in there? These crooked-ass guards. Nadine brought me that gun in there. And she talking about, don't shoot nobody with us. <laughs> well, if I do, I won't be around to tell on no one. Because yeah. they're going to have to kill me to get this out of my day. I'm, I'm, I mean, to get this out of my hand because... If I got to go for that, that means somebody did something that foul that I won't use my shank. Did you or Sammy ever had any altercations while y'all was in there, or no? He just gave me dirty looks, mm. you know, little, like he on high horse. And uh, me, I don't pay him no attention because I'm watching everybody in there, like Fat Cat, all of them. Because Fat Cat got with white yeah. boy Rick; those two was cool, and they was always talking mess. Or should I say, Fat Cat was always telling Rick, "Why you uh?" It's just sign them in, this and that. Well, because prosecutors say either sign them in or they're just gonna transfer him mm. somewhere else. But I was gonna stay. Yeah. Cause I'm still testifying. Do do you get paid to testify or to witness? I never got paid. Mm. Now, if they were paying some people, they they might have. Certain uh, state probably was. Mm. Now, white boy or Rick. He was making sure that they had anything they wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Now, White Boy Rick was in there at one point in time. Did y'all ever, because I seen on one uh, interview with, uh, I guess, Al Prophet, you talked about you came in and uh, White Boy Rick saw you. He got scared and you told him, like, no, I'm in here for the same reason you are. Well, you cooperated. when I came into the unit, because you don't know who's coming in. Oh, okay. Even though you there, you don't know who's coming in until they pass that picture around. Mm. And they passed the picture around to me. And three of them guys didn't want to sign. Got you. I was like, what you mean? You going to transfer? He said, yeah, you got to be transferred because you because you know some people here. I said, yeah, I, well, I know white boy Rick here. I ain't got no beef with him. You could tell him he could come talk to me. Yeah. They said, well, it's more than him. So 
Jordan said, here, here, let me show you something. Do you know these people here? Yeah. He said, these are the three that uh, don't want to sign you in. Like, what the hell? I'm in the winter you jail right there. Yeah, but they say that you go into prison to kill people. I think, mean, well, yeah. That's, you know, that's the old me. Yeah. I'm changed now. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> but, uh, did let me talk to white boy Rick. He said he ain't got no problem doing it because we spoke. Yeah. And uh, Anthony, I spoke to Anthony. I said, uh, the, the contract is off you. The Italian guys didn't want to pay me. Well, they gave me part, but they didn't want to pay to have you taken out. They just wanted you beat up. Yeah. And uh, Carlos Latus, he... He was like, man, I know you. You was going to come to my island and kill me. I said, something like that. I think we could drop a bomb on your island and kill you and everybody else on that <laughs> island. You bought yourself an island, dumb dumb. And Pablo didn't like that. Yeah. No. You showing everybody what you doing. You think the government ain't going to get involved with this? Yes, they did. And they ran him off his own island. He ran. And then he tried to become president. Yeah. I said, man, I left out of there. I said, I ain't coming back here because y'all doing some crazy stuff that the Army going to get involved and they going to come and they ain't coming to talk or to arrest you. Mm. They going to snipe in your ass. Excuse my language. Since, they going to take you out. Since um, white boy, boy Rick been home, you had a chance to see him, right? Cause you, I seen document. him when he first came home. We met up at uh, Eastland mm. on his uh, tour bus or a bus that they were riding around with, you know. Okay. And I met him there. We sat and we talked. And we kicked the bobos a little bit. But then when we got ready to leave, we took pictures. Mm -hmm. Me and him uh, holding hands, showing that there, there's no beef here. Because the people wanted you gone, they no longer here. And those that might hate you, I don't think that they're going to even try to do anything. If they did, then they ain't going to come to me. They're going to go to somebody else and probably try to do it under the... Yeah. The download, but you got to understand, some people still don't like you because mm -hmm. what you did. Even though they served their time and they got out before you did, you snitched. <laughs> you served more time than anybody. Yeah. Hell, you served more time than murderers. <laughs> it, so you did wrong by snitching. You could have just served your time and you probably would have been out way before all this time you just served. Yeah. But the state kept their foot. On your back. You think they did And there wrong? was a purpose for that. The purpose was that they really wanted you still dead. Yeah. Certain people in the government, certain people in the courthouses, police, and so forth wanted you dead. I mean, hell, the police ran up at 13 Bovian to arrest those people that you was telling them. Damn. You set them up. And that's when they was really old, man. I said, man, they're going to come after you. They might even find you here. Now, the, the the media tried to paint White Boy Rick as like a a big drug kingpin. He wasn't. And I saw Johnny Curry, John Curry on uh Johnny Curry, yeah. you know, on Vlad, and he was like, Man, no white kid <laughs> running nothing. <laughs> Not the East Side Detroit. Yeah. He ain't gonna, nah, he worked it with their uh brother. He did a little thing here and there. His main thing, he was uh trying to get information on them so he could go back and tell the feds so he could get for money that gun charge that they first arrested him on. Yeah. And uh, like I said, when he came to one of our houses to buy, I'm like, what the hell? Hey, don't sell to that boy. That's my boy Rick. Damn. Why you coming? I said, yeah. He down with the Curry brothers. Don't come to us. We ain't down with that crap. If you if you gonna get your mess, you better go to your friends. That's the Curry brother, but he trying to get more information on every other group. Yeah. That's why he was going around buying drugs from other groups and shit, trying to get the information so he can get back to the DA or FBI, DA, or whoever he was, uh group he was working for. Gotcha. But they shouldn't have never had that boy working because he was a minor. 
The boy should have never even got that time because they basically forced him to work. Yeah. They tricked him. Like I said, if they could get their foot in your butt and make you be a puppet for them, they'll put you out there. They don't care your age. Lay you down. But. And I, I see they deny his lawsuit. They threw it out. Oh, yeah. I heard somebody here filed a lawsuit against uh, uh, Michigan. Yeah. And the federal. I'm like, how you going to sue somebody that you made a deal with to work for? You was a minor, true enough, but. Uh, I mean, I guess that's it. Enough as a minor. How do you make a decision as his a minor daddy for knew. Them? His uh, daddy knew it. So, you know, I'm quite sure that his daddy probably bagged him up on this. Yeah, okay, you know, like my son gonna help you out. This and that. So basically, you gave them permission to work your son. Yeah. I mean, you were selling us silencers and shit, but yet you was telling. We didn't know that. Yeah. We found out that later when Reg, Rocky Reg was in the jailhouse, Reg was in there with his daddy. Mm. And when he called home, he said, man, uh, white boy Rick Daddy in here, man. I said, man, if you can. Do them. You already mm. got life without a parole, and don't worry about that. Cause we gonna try to get you back to court. We get you back to court. We are gonna get you a bond. Yeah, because we already got the people in the courthouse and so forth to hide certain things that's on your record and yeah. just leave it up with a gun charge. Where we can get you out on that, then you run. Yeah, which they did. They got a back of a bond. The people, like, how y'all get that man a bond? <laughs> No, he what? got a murder. <laughs> we didn't see it on his record. Yeah, because they still had the uh, cops in there. We still had the cops in in our back pockets. Now, Steve Fishman, he said he had to cross-examine you on a case before. He what? He had to cross-examine you on a case before. Um, But he is, so a lot of people regard Steve Fishman as one of the top defense criminal attorneys in, in Michigan. What, what's your take on Steve? Probably up there, but I wouldn't consider him the top one. That's why I never tried to pay him to come work for me. Mm. Two lawyers that uh, I was more interested in getting was uh, Paul Curtis and uh, I got the other man named because I did hire the other one because he the one helped set up my uh, paperwork to get make sure that I got immunity. Yeah, okay. See, when they came down there to try to talk to me, the feds didn't want nobody talking to me. Because mm. Paul White was a judge. And they said, oh, no, oh, no, no, no. We gonna try to jam him up. I said, uh, not through me. <laughs> I don't know nothing about that man other than he was a good man. He because he trying to get his brother out of the joint. Yeah, that's why he became a lawyer, trying to fight the rightness. For so. And uh, but fisherman, to be honest with you, I don't. I, I can't even remember him cross examining me or anything. But if he said he, he did, he, he told a story on the interview. Um. He didn't say what case it was, but he brought up the fact that I guess might have been Will in the case because I know they would hire him to uh, to defend him. Now Will with them best friends too, or yeah. no? Okay, so he did. That, he did say he represented some best friends on some murders, and I think he said he, re he represented Rock and Ridge, but he ended up getting sentenced to life. I ain't quite sure, well, but I know the. Now, see, I never pay too much attention to the lawyers, but I know when he got that first life, yeah, uh, that was kind of screwed up because we thought we had put enough money out there. Yeah. But of course, then the guy lived. Oh, yeah, and you can't I was be like, that. How you shoot a nigga on the couch and he lives? You run back there in the back and get the person that you're supposed to get, but you messed up. Mm. You're going to do some money. Okay, you do, you shot him. You thought he was dead. You go back there, you get the person, then you run back. Mm. You should have put a couple more in the yeah. person here that was on the couch, just for sure. Now, uh, when it when it comes to your stories, everybody talks about how amazing you are telling stories. Your theatrics is any other stories for you juiced up a little bit to be made good for TV. Just that's the way I talk. Just the way I act. Yeah. Real life or prison or every, everybody, anybody that know me would tell you what, that's Boone acting goofy. Everywhere, you would never get to yeah. know the real me unless you step on my toe. Yeah. And then you don't want to see that one. Yeah. If you see the real me come out, you probably shit yourself. So when people feel like 
Boom got inconsistencies when he tell the same story. Something may be different one way when you tell it again. It's a kind of different. Same story, but things kind of change. Well, I probably just don't add everything into the first time. Gotcha. I leave a little something out here and there because <clears throat> I'm me. not sure if it could come back hurt me or hurt gotcha. someone else. Gotcha. You're like my boy. I couldn't speak on him, but I did. Yeah. The only reason I did was because I know it can't hurt him. Yeah. You can't fall back up on him. Now, I, I do look look at Al Prophet, man. Because of him, that's how I discovered you years ago. Because of Al Prophet, American Dope, what he doing over there, I was it really opened me up to Detroit Kingpin because I, I was telling um, Courtney Brown Jr. I got a chance to interview Courtney. Mm. And Courtney, we was talking about, it's like, really, it seemed like Detroit and New York are the only two cities that really, and, well, he said Baltimore and Philly, too. Were like the only cities that really just had kingpins. How you feel? Because he's like you know, California had kingpin. I mean, Florida, you know, free Miami, room. all them places okay. got kingpin, way bigger than anybody else. But these are the only ones you hear for because they block. But, well, so that's they what want I mean. to call them kingpin. But go down there to uh, Miami. You got tons of them down there. Got yacht that bring in it in over. Well, as we as we I didn't said, make black. this. Yeah. They brown it, and okay, we gonna get in on it too. So we buy it. And that's what I was talking about with their our community, blacks, the yeah. black king okay. pins. Yeah. It seemed like that. Well, you got some in California. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I know Freeway Ricky Ross came from out of there. Big Ed was there. And what you think? <laughs> but now he locked back up. Uh, uh, greed he, would always get you. Mm. February, he got locked up like he got caught with some work. <laughs> I think in Ohio, in, his, in the car, he, he was driving. Yeah, okay, I, I know I heard something, but I didn't think. It, I thought it was in California, but probably was in Ohio, because I know, like I said, words get back to me about certain people, and they're like, "Man," I said, "Oh, well, you know, people get out and they think that they still could do what they did." Yeah, I got out, and I was thinking about going back, but I thought to myself, I said, "Well." The way I did it, I never had to run down the street or shoot out a car. I could be on a building. I could be in in the back of a car, yeah. trunk, a van, anywhere. And just well, What's your relationship with, with Al now? Uh, there is no relation. The man refused to answer my call when I called him. I texted him. I went through Facebook. I did everything to try to reach out to him. Mm. Him and Mike, uh, Mike was... Uh, Mike was the producer of White Boy Rick. Uh, okay. Saying. I reached out for help from them because of what happened when they locked me up for those five months. Gotcha. And uh, they they said they, well, Mike said he was going to do it. Uh, Al Prophet, couldn't nobody reach him. My son tried to reach him. I had other people trying to reach him. He, he wasn't that answering nothing. So when I got out, I called him from my phone. He wasn't answered. The phone rang. Uh, uh, I tried to uh, FaceTime him. He wouldn't take it. I mean, I was like, okay, this man played the hell out of me. No. Yeah. So, if I was that man like I used to be, I would have went and found him. Mm. And his ass would just been some pig food. Mm. <laughs> well, hopefully y'all can work that out, man. Oh, well, says he talked the shit about me on one of the things. He, he uh. was like a... Uh, Boone a snitch and this and that. And I'm like, come say it to my face. Mm. Now, I'd be willing to die if he were to say that to my face because I could chop his head off because the man a coward. Don't say stuff behind my back that you ain't got the balls to say to my face. Don't let this great fool you. I don't need too much to mm. do a person. You just had to get me at that point where I just don't give. I, well, you know, I just give up on life. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. I always had thought that, you know, like I should have been gone. Yeah. But when he made that thing, man, and people was calling me, telling me, hey, man, check out that L prophet. Man, he talked about you like a. So what? Send it to my phone. They sent it to him. Oh, okay. He, I got. He probably mad because I'm doing an interview with everybody mm -hmm. else and not him. Because he sent me a thing asking me, we should get together and make money. 
I was like, this fool got a lot of balls to figure out I'm going to do that. But I said, okay, yeah, reach out again <laughs> with me. He never got back in touch with me. I like, yeah, he because he know what he did was foul. We, we, but he do that to everybody. Yeah, he tried to get the people that still is on parole, probation, mm-hmm. because then he ain't got to give them nothing. He ain't got to do anything because you can't profit from your uh, crime if you still are on parole, probation, uh, and so forth. So he was interviewing all them people. He even did white boy Rick. He knew that he ain't got to give him nothing. Yeah. Same way with Mike and all of them. They all interviewed him while he was in prison. Oh, yeah, I can call White Boy right now and talk to him. This and that. Yeah, because y'all know y'all ain't got to give him nothing, but y'all finna make a bundle off of him. Man. What you do, slip him something under the table? Yeah, he was a thousand. And you done made millions off this man, off his back. Same way when y'all did that movie. Oh, y'all made money. Then you threw him a little crumb. A quick question. In, in his world today, do you think or just in the city, Detroit, do you think like hit men still exist? And is and with, with technology, is it harder now to get away with it? Well, this hit men is gonna always exist because somebody gonna always want somebody done. But then you got the young fools out here thinking that they hit man. No, you just a dummy that pull a trigger. Mm-hmm. And the person throw you a couple hundred, five hundred, or a thousand. What makes that different than and it you being think a hit that's man? money? That man finna make bukus of money off you. After you kill that person, he went dead because now either he going to take over that territory or people going to know. You don't mess with him. You see what mm. happened to Wichita. And he got it done for 500 So what makes that person who did it for 500 not really a hitman? Because is it just, he's not me. making enough money to pay for a lawyer. He's not making enough money to really survive him. That's mm. going to last him a quick second. No, for sure. So if you want to be a good hit man, you got to be willing to understand that you do a hit, you never speak on it again, you don't even think about it. That's the way it don't tear up your head. And as far as you doing it for 500, think about what going to happen this man after you kill him. Mm. What will happen to his company, his business, his whatever? You thinking that this man that gave you that 500 didn't think on that already before yeah. he paid you the 500 to kill him? He knew he's okay, I get this. I'm going to have this guy kill him. Then I could move in and take over his business, his operation. Yeah. So I got, I'm got. i getting all this money back for me just spending 500. Yeah. Me, person come to me, oh, you got to come with some money. If you come with some chump change to me, I'm going to kill you. It, and take that chump change. In your mind in Detroit, of all times, who are your top five toughest guys in Detroit in, this, in the streets, in your mind? Well, right now, I don't just, see... No, no, just... I just say, I don't see any. <laughs> They're all dead. <laughs> all the ones that, that was the top five people in here, your, here in Detroit. Who were those top five? Who were your top five? Like, man, hey, I get them dudes they respect for their work they put in. Demetrius... Maserati Rick, Big Ed, got to give it to him. Marco. Eh, best friends. Best friends. Those are five. But yeah. like I said, I do work for them, anyone that got the money. <laughs> I, I, mean, you, I did work for them. I did work for everybody that had the money that yeah. I knew. But have I ever did work for Demetrius? No. Did work for Big Ed? No. Yeah. But the other three people, yeah, I did work for them. Gotcha. But, what uh, about Bush, Bush Jones? When he when they came around? That was, was YBI. You, yeah, were you yeah, around? He was in prison. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And uh, when he got out, I was like, man, you you, you really put some. He said, hey, yeah, watch this, boom. Watch what I do when I get out there. But I got out several months after he got out. Mm. And I was I was glad the brother got out. He served some time, and then when he got out, but we both had the same type of jeep, black yeah. and gold. But when the police thought they was pulling him over, they was pulling me over. <laughs> I was like, and he came up there, look, okay, but then he go back to the back and look. I said, man, what's up? Who are you? I said, I'm a businessman. I own crap landscaping, crap lawn care. 
crap janitorial service. By that time, he finally went around to the passenger door and seen a, seen a little white sign that is that is a magnet. He's slapping <laughs> on there, you know, but I didn't have one on, on, on the driver. Door. Yeah. They were like, oh, okay, this look like the YBI boy. But I said, I know what you're talking about. No, this ain't. He got one like mine, but I'm going to get rid of this and get me a, a 150. And I did. I got rid of that and got me a 150 because, like I told Butch, hey, man, you driving around here and shit, and people thinking I'm you or you me? Yeah, that's that ain't not good. good. That's At not all. Good. Well, I tell you what, boom. I think we got another classic interview. Uh, you know, I enjoy, man, being able to talk to you so often and working, you know, you working, your channel back going now. Um, on YouTube, so if people want to see a lot of exclusive content that's on its way, you telling stories, and you know what I'm saying, your life stories, unfiltered, giving up more that you on your own channel, so people can go check that out. Is it, it's, what is it called again, your channel? Nate Boone Craft Thug Life. Thug Life, yeah, Nate Boone Craft Thug Life, man, y'all go check that out. I'm on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. When you see it, you would know it because it's going to you got the little thing where you hit on that and send you straight to me. Yeah. It won't send you to these phonies that's out here claiming this and that. That is taking pieces from you, like the interviews that I have done yeah. and put it on their thing or to be sitting there talking about it. Yeah, man. Oh, man. He looked like... Man, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to run into him in the dark. Well, you know, this, no, that's I'm the like, big hey, thing, though, boom. You know, if you run into me in the dark, I'm still a human being. I can't help how I look. Just treat me nice. I'm going to treat you nice. There you go. Treat me like you want to be treated. And yeah. you get all, all of the respect from me. Yeah. But you come to me wrong, I ain't going to say that you might walk away from that. <laughs> and you come to me wrong, I'm going to try my best to take you out because I don't want you coming back again. Yeah. So just give me my respect and I'll give you respect. I talk to anybody that talked to me. I go in store... People follow me around, and they want to have me on account and peep at me. I see this, but I don't say nothing until they finally get the balls and say, are you Nate Boone? I say, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, man, you legend. This is, I, no, 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 no. Don't tell nobody that. I don't want these kids thinking that they should do what I What I did was stupid and foolish and ignorant. Yeah. But I love money. Gotcha. And you got to be really cut. To be someone like me, you got to really be cut for that. Yeah. Trust me, people have nightmares, flashbacks, all type of stuff. Me, I gave all that life up when I was eight years old and started getting into the game. People tell me, man, how could you be in the game at eight years old? I was eight by age, but my mentality and the way I carried myself was like 18. Mm -hmm. You got to understand, I wore, I, wore, I wore suits back then. I was just a kid. <laughs> My mama used to always, well, where you getting these clothes from? People at the store just give them to me. Said, no, they don't. I said, okay, they don't. Said, Why you grinning? I said, because I go in there and change my clothes, Ma. <laughs> clothes I wear out of the house. I go rest up to the store and change my clothes and walk back out the store. Nobody say nothing. Hey. I've been doing that for years. What? But, uh, I have always acted different. That's why I say at a young age, oh, uh, 10 going on 11, yeah. I had my brother to buy me a car. And he bought me a car in his name, but I drove it. Yeah, I remember you saying I that. I let him drive it once in a while, you know, yeah. but, but really I didn't like to. Matter of fact, that's how I went to prison once because my brother was driving my car and I was in Chicago. Gotcha. When he did the crime here, I was in Chicago. But I got a lie detector test papers to show that everything I state yeah. now, I can prove with the paperwork and boom, there it is. No, the federal and state lie detector test. <laughs> See, what I said, I said because they give me immunity. <laughs> I ain't got to lie about something. Yeah. I got immunity. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man, keep doing your thing. I know people, I know Say Cheese talking about bringing you back again too. Oh, I people didn't love you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, but nice. again, go check out the channel, Nate Bull Craft Thug Life. Thug Life on YouTube right now. Hey, Bull, until we meet again. Until we meet again, my brother. Peace. I'm always here for you because I, I consider you as a brother. Hey, I appreciate that. Or another mother. Hey, there we go. <laughs> until we meet again. Yes, most definitely.